Hello, and welcome to your video on compound inequalities. This idea is going to be similar to what we've been studying, but obviously the word compound means we're going to be adding a little bit to it. So let's start with our definition. The definition of a compound inequality is two or more inequalities that are joined together using the words either and or or. Now even though it says two or more, the most that we're going to be approaching in this class is just two. So looking at those words, and and or, those set up the two cases for us. Some words that are sometimes used to replace and or or are the intersection for and, and then the union for or. So you can think about intersection as being what two things would have in common, and the union just being the joining up of two things. So I've got some additional phrases that we can write down. For the AND case, when you're actually solving a compound inequality, you're going to have two inequalities put together in one statement. You're going to solve each of those inequalities, and then you're going to determine what the overlap is. In other words, what do those two inequalities have in common? The union, or the OR case, you're still going to solve each of the inequalities separately, but then what you're going to do is combine the solutions. And so you can see in our picture here that if A was one solution and B was the other solution, we've combined them so everything is colored in. Whereas with the AND case, if A was one solution and B was the other solution, we've only included what is in the overlap. So let's see how this works with inequalities. We have a few examples where we're just going to be graphing the compound inequalities. So you can see how it fits our definition here. It's, it's two or more inequalities joined with the words and or or. So the and case is going to be um, what the solutions have in common. So I'm actually going to show you another way to write this because if you notice our first inequality is written backwards and so it says that negative 4 is less than x but we like to say that x is greater than negative 4. And then the second one is set up like normal, x is less than 2. But if you think about those two statements, if x is greater than negative 4 and x is less than 2, we could rewrite that into one inequality where we just put the x in the middle. So that is a compound inequality, sometimes it's called a double inequality, and I think that's a little bit easier to read because it clearly shows us that x is between those two numbers. So if we start to label our number line, and we want to put our solution on the number line, we're going to graph just that, where, where x is in between. Now we do have less than symbols, so we know that we're going to have open circles at the endpoints. So I have an open circle at negative 4 and an open circle at 2, and then x is between those numbers, so we shade in between. And so that's the overlap. When x is greater than negative 4, but x is also less than 2, those are the only numbers that are going to satisfy that solution. Now the OR case is a little bit different, and I, I think this will make sense as well m is greater, or I'm sorry, m is less than 2, or m is greater than 5. And if you think about just numbers in general, you can't have an and case with this because you can't have a number that is less than 2 and greater than 5 at the same time. So if we label our number line, Again, we have um, just a less than symbol and a greater than symbol, so we're going to have open circles. So if I graph the m is less than 2, I'm going to start with an open circle at 2, and then I'm going to shade less than. Likewise, I have m is greater than 5, so I have an open circle at 5, and I'm going to shade in the greater than direction. So notice that the AND graph is a one-piece graph where x is between two numbers, and the OR graph is two separate pieces. A couple more. The next one, y is less than 1, or y is greater than or equal to negative 2. So let's start labeling our graph here. And I'm labeling it this way, but you can 
set it up any way you want. If you'd rather go by twos or threes or fives, however you want to set it up is fine. So I have the OR case, which is the joining of the two solutions. Combine the two solutions. And there's a reason I'm writing this out for this one. I have y is less than 1, so I put an open circle at 1, and I shade in this direction. Or y can be greater than or equal to negative 2. So I put a closed circle at negative 2, and then I shade in this direction. And even though this was an open circle at 1, it kind of gets shaded in when I'm coloring in the direction for the y is greater than negative 2. So what you'll notice is the entire line is colored. And so the solution to this is actually all reals. Now this is kind of a special case. Typically you're going to have two separate pieces. But um, when the two separate pieces over, um, when you combine the two solutions and they overlap like that and color in the entire line, that means that every possible number is a solution to that compound inequality. All right, this last one is really just the AND case or the intersection. And this one, again, is kind of set up how I wrote the other one. So even though we were given the AND language, I encouraged you to write it with the, um, the double inequality. And so this is just the double inequality set up already. So if we start to label our number line, and look at the parts of this double inequality. We have basically A is between negative 3 and positive 6. So we have a closed circle at negative 3, and we have a closed circle at 6, and then the numbers that are going to satisfy this compound inequality fall between. So you really just have to figure out how are these two inequalities related. Is it the overlap, or is it the combination of the two solutions. And what's going to give that away is either the words and and or, um, or the setup itself. If you see a double inequality like you do in example number four, then that tells you that that's the and case. All right, now we're going to look at a few word examples. And we're going to not only write the inequality that describes the situation, but then also graph it as well. So our first example here, number five, says the US says the safe level of chlorine is at least one part per million and no greater than three parts per million. So we want to use our active reading strategies here and underline the important information. And the first thing that I am really noticing here is that it says at least one. And then it also says no greater than three obviously parts per million, but those are the key numbers. Then I'm also noticing the word and. So what that's telling me is that the chlorine has to be between one and three. Now it says at least one, so I know that chlorine can be at that one part per million. And I know it's an and case, so I'm going to set it up as our double inequality. And then it says no greater than three. So the fact that it says no greater than three means it can actually be three. So when I'm graphing this compound inequality, now I didn't provide a number line for this one, so it's actually going to be a little bit easier. I'm just going to label the 1 and the 3, and then I'm going to graph it using my closed circles because the endpoints are included, and I'm going to shade in between. Our second example, number 6, says planes must fly below 10,000 feet or above 15,000 feet. So again, using our active reading strategies here, below 10,000, above 15,000, and the word or. So that tells me that I'm going to actually use both solutions and combine them. So the planes must be below 10,000. That is less than 10,000. They cannot fly at 10,000. They have to be below. Or the planes can fly above 15,000. Again, can't be 15,000, has to be above. So then when we set up our graph, again, I'm going to really simplify this, and I'm just going to put the 10,000 on the graph. 
the 15,000 on the graph, and then I'm going to graph each inequality separately. So I've got open circle at 10,000, shading to the left because we're looking at less than, and over here, open circle at 15,000, shading to the right because it's greater than. So just like before, we are going to expect you to be able to, to read through a scenario and then represent it with both an inequality and a graph. Now let's get to the solving. So we are going to go back to our equation solving skills and just apply those, remembering our special rule if that comes up. And then the new step is just going to be the fact that we have two inequalities working together. So this first case, hopefully you recognize as an AND case. And I guess I would encourage you that if the AND case is written out using the word AND, I would encourage you to write it this way as a double inequality. So what we're going to do is solve it like we normally would. So we want to isolate the x, and we have 2 times x plus 4. So our first step has to be to get rid of that 4. So I'm going to subtract 4. But you'll notice we have two inequality symbols, so I actually have to subtract 4 from each part of that inequality. So I have to subtract 4 over here on this side of the first inequality, and then I also have to subtract 4 over here, which is on this side of the second inequality. So it's like we're solving both of the inequalities at one time. So way to the left, negative 6 and negative 4 is negative 10. I bring down the less than symbol, I bring down the 2x, the 4s there are going to cancel each other out, bring down the less than or equal to symbol, and then 12 minus 4 is 8. So we're getting a little bit closer to isolating the x. The next step is going to be to divide by 2. But once again, I'm solving two inequalities simultaneously, so I have to divide every part of that inequality by 2. So moving from left to right, negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. The 2's cancel. Bring down all of your symbols, and then finishing off on the far right, 8 divided by 2 is 4. So by writing it as a double inequality or solving it as a double inequality, my solution is right there for us. And then all we have to do is finish it out with a graph. So I know that the AND is the overlap, but like I said, the double inequality just sets it right up for us. We know that X is between negative 5 and positive 4. The negative 5 gets an open circle. The positive 4 gets a closed circle. So they don't always have to match. They're not always all or nothing here. You can have one of each. And then we are finished with this problem. Our last example is the OR case. So we're not going to be solving both inequalities simultaneously. We're going to have to do them in two separate steps and then just combine our answer in the end. So our first one is just a simple one-step equation. To get x by itself, we are going to divide both sides of the inequality by 6. So we have x is less than or equal to negative 5. Notice I did not flip the inequality symbol because I did not divide by a negative. I can still get a negative answer. That's fine. Um, the only time you're going to switch that is when you actually divide by a negative. So that's my first part. And then the second part, we have two steps that we're going to have to use here. So we're going to subtract 9 from both sides. So we have 4x is greater than or equal to negative 12. Divide both sides by 4, and then we have x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So our solution, when we write our answer, we have to have both parts, and for the OR case, we always have to have the word OR in there. So you'd have x is less than or equal to negative 5, or x is greater than or equal to negative 3. So For this one, I'm just going to label every other line. I'll start with the x is less than or equal to negative 5, so that has a closed circle because the endpoint is included. It's less than, so I want to shade to the left. And then the second part of this solution, x is greater than or equal to negative 3, so we have a closed circle because the endpoint is included. And then we shade to the right because it is greater than. 
This concludes your video on compound inequalities.